Welcome to Geeks of the North, a hobby and gaming podcast of Adult Purveyors. We're here to paint some miniatures and talk about the hobby, so why don't you sit back, relax, grab a paintbrush, and enjoy the show. Hey everyone, welcome to Geeks of the North, your hobby and gaming podcast of Adult Purveyors. As always, I am your host, Paul Filio, here once again this week with uh, my most beloved of co-hosts, Antoine Bergeron. Hello! How's it going, buddy? Pretty good, you? Yeah, it's going okay. Uh, my kid has pink eye. I have to miss a bunch of days of work, which is going to put me way behind. Well, but aside from that, I'm fine. <laughs> Weren't you supposed to be alone at work for the week or something like that? Oh, uh, yeah, that starts Wednesday, and that's basically when I go back to work. So oh, okay. I don't get any chance to do any kind of... Uh, Prep or anything? Yeah, exactly, or to finish any of my own work before I have to take over for a bunch of people who are going away. So, yeah. It's going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way of seeing it. Exactly. You know what? You gotta laugh so I don't cry. That's I gotta laugh so I don't cry. Yep, that's for sure. You, how you doing? I'm doing well. Uh, people, people probably know now. We've mentioned a bit. Uh, we're on the process of moving here, but well, we sold our house. We bought a new one. And I started packing this weekend, so my hobby supplies and games are slowly getting into boxes, so I'll be having less and less stuff I can do, which is probably a good thing, because I only have the term in French, but girouette. The, I don't the know stuff what that's on uh, barns that show the wind direction. On the weather vane? A weather vane, maybe. I, I don't, no idea. But uh, when somebody cannot settle on something, we call them girouettes in French. Oh, okay. Uh, because they always change direction. Change whichever way the wind blows. Yeah. So Affectionately referred to as gamer ADD. Yeah. Or hobby ADD too. So having to decide what I'll be able to work on for the next month, because I'll be boxing the rest. It's probably a crazy good idea f- to help me focus. So I'm not there yet. Uh, I'm not at the abuse supply yet and minis, but uh, board games have been uh, boxed up and stuff like that. So uh, this week we'll decide what I'll be working on for the next month or wow. month and a half, maybe. Big decisions. Yeah. Really big decisions. <laughs> So I just realized that ra- that bag was probably in front of my microphone. So it is. A lot of like, yeah, yeah. I moved it out of the way now. We still hear it. Well, you're going to. There's just no way to avoid that. <laughs> I'm looking for my bottle of baby poop. Baby poop. Do, 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 do. See that? Or I have to go get it fresh from my set upstairs. <laughs> um, Not sure it's going to have the same effect. <laughs> well... I don't, I'm not talking about the color, but the effect. Well, actually, baby poop isn't really baby poop colored either. No, it's like baby diarrhea poop, maybe. Well, even not even that. Like, it's kind of greenish. I, I don't know. My, yeah. My, my kids don't have green poop all that often. Yeah, Why are we talking about this on the show? <laughs> okay, we're, we're, we're going to kind of <laughs> shift this back to a not poop related topic before we get flagged as the, you know, not safe for work or whatever. Sure. I listen to this podcast. All I do is talk about kids poop for an hour. Yeah, that and politics. Wow. Yes, that's that's what we're known for. Yep. Our political review. Usually, I'm the one that brings that up, Antoine. I'm surprised at you. Ah, oh, I've mentioned it uh, once or twice too. Yeah, I know. I think it's both our favorite review ever. So. Well, it's one of the only reviews ever. Yep. Let's, let's be honest. I, yeah. I, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so uh, you were talking about paint. Why did you need baby poop for? Oh, I'm painting um, uh, Father Oak from Pulp City. Mm-hmm. So he's kind of like a, a treant-ish kind of, sort of. Yeah. And um, I... Uh, Decided to do my wood using 
the secret weapon weathering paints. They have like a what's it called? Like old wood, handle wood, weathered wood or something, the the triad. Okay. And um it, it's kind of a it starts from a green. It goes to a yellow, goes to like a a grayish color. And I, I like the tones it does. Um and him being a tree I mean he's super textured barky, so I was doing lots of dry brushing. And I'm looking for something to kinda you know, blend it all in. We'll do a do a glaze over it and blend it all in. No, that all would be a good color for that. I, uh, I was thinking baby poop uh was gonna be my go to color for all your tree blending needs. I approve. Well, I'm glad, you know, because that, that means a lot to me. <laughs> I'm not even being facetious. Shut up. I'm allowed to value someone's opinion. Sure. That's your right. I mean, we, uh, it's been pretty well established that you're a far better painter than, uh, than, than I. Yeah, so I'm working on him, and, uh, I've also got, I got a bunch of stuff on my table. I got Acorn, who is his daughter. And I've got uh, Dr. Mercury, who's almost done, because he's mostly just the Terminator. Just a bunch of layers of shiny metallics. Uh, done zenithly, to, so I don't have to worry about shading him, really. And, uh, yeah, I got... Oh, I got Twilight on my table, too, so I may... I may glaze her with some purple, because that's going to be her final color. Yeah, busy, busy with the, the Pulp City stuff. That's good. Good stuff uh, to be busy on. It's a good game, and the models are, are fun to paint. That is true. It's so fun. They, they, they bring something more colorful, usually, <laughs> to the table. And they're a bit chunky, not too many small details. They're, they're they're, depending on the mini, yeah. Yeah, they're enjoyable to work on. A bit, to work on. Yeah, I, I, got, uh, I got a kick out of it. That's funny. We talk about, you know, not too many details like it's a good thing. Because um, in this case, it's, it's what we're looking for, so it is a good thing. Well, I, I'm painting uh, Veteran Ox right now. And I would be up for less detail. For sure. Yeah. Um, Steamport's kind of famous for that, though, right? The uh, How many satchels can you put on a guy? Mm-hmm. They went to the Rob Leafield School of Miniature Sculpting. Needs more pouches. Yeah, pouches, straps, chains, knives. Butchers are known for that. How many weapons can you hide over the model? Well, you say hide, but it's not even really hidden, right? It's just kind of everywhere. Yeah. This is really frustrating because I totally want to glaze this guy, but I, I don't have the baby poop. <laughs> I am at an impasse. There's that bag back again. Richie Violet or Leviathan Purple. We'll go Leviathan Purple. I don't even know if that wash exists anymore. We also could just do a pose. Pause the show. I mean, I can literally turn around and run to the place while you're talking and come back. And aside from the sound of me running away and the chair noises and stuff, no one would know I was gone. Yeah. I mean, the paints are only about 10 feet behind me. You might as well grab it. <laughs> well, now you're just teasing me. Tempting me. Okay, I'll do a. Uh... I'll do the glaze on. I'll think of the name here. Twilight. Twilight. Dr. Mercury. Yeah. Twilight. Twilight. Yep, yep, yep. I really should be working on judgment stuff too. I keep saying I'm going to work on it. <laughs> it never seems to happen. They're a bigger commitment to work on. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. I think right. Uh, and the gorgeous models. Don't get me wrong. I, I love my. Love my judgment models. No, the, I was not seeing it as a negative. Just yeah, but it's exactly right. It's it's a bigger commitment, and I gotta feel like putting you know five to eight hours into a model, which I know for some people is not a big commitment, but for me that's a that's a huge commitment for a model. Though I did um, I did start doing some prep work for that today. I uh, disassembled and cleaned all my airbrushes because those things get a lot of the airbrush. And my airbrushes were in a pretty sad state. I had been uh, abusing them for months <laughs> without really giving them the deep clean they deserved. And uh, it was at the point today where like regular cleaning would not do, so they went into the ultrasonic. 
Mm. Which I, you know, not recommended for anyone, by the way. Uh, ultrasonic clean your brushes at your own risk. Um, because there are some horror stories out there. But does also, it, do, it, it oh, cleans it too much or? Strip the chrome plating, wreck all the seals, uh, you name it. Okay. Um, okay, that glaze thing did not work at all. Um, yeah. And if, if you are going to use an ultrasonic, uh, to clean your, your stuff, I would suggest not using alcohol as the solvent. Because alcohol can heat up and catch on fire in an ultrasonic thing. Oh, wow. <laughs> yep. Yep, yep, yep. It's really not a good idea, though. Nope. Not so much. People do it all the time in the uh, 3D printing forums to, uh, to clean prints, like resin prints. They'll uh, toss them to a ultrasonic cleaner full of alcohol. And, you know, there's always the people are like, ah, it's a low chance, it's a low chance, never happened, we never happened. And then you get that one guy that's like, yeah, I nearly burnt down my house because my cleaner caught on fire and I wasn't there. And, you know. <laughs> yep. Sounds like this kind of thing that if you do it, you stay right next to it. <laughs> well, there's a lot of things in life that fall under that and people don't, so. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. That's just the way it is. But yeah, so I cleaned my airbrushes. And then I actually had to use one that was like, it was like using a different tool. I, you know, you don't realize how bad these things are until, until you get back to the clean one. You're like, oh, oh my. And you don't know how the heck you were ever painting with it before. <laughs> That's literally what it was like. I, uh, I, I get that with, just with regular super glue, so when you buy a new pot, like, oh, it does glue fast. You don't have to hold it five minutes. So, yeah. having a clean airbrush, I'm sure, has a even bigger effect. <laughs> yeah, when I took the, um, the airbrushes out of the solvent, because I cleaned two of them, I couldn't see to the bottom of the solvent anymore. <laughs> I clean them in a kind of a watered down solution of simple green and water. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you can't see the bottom of the pan anymore, that's that's when you know that it was time. The kids were dirty. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But yeah, I'll say that's what I'm working on. Um Father Oak here. And then uh, I guess I'll have to repaint Twilight now because that just failed. You, what you up to? What you got? You got, oh, you said you had the, the butcher. Well, I have my last two butchers model on the table right now. So, veteran boar and veteran brisket. That's going to be weird, buddy. Yeah. Antoine with a fully painted faction. Well, I already have like something like 13 models for the faction when you only need six. So it's not that big a deal, but still. But now you can say you're fully painted. Yeah, and well, I'll be missing the new captain. Oh, the Hawks, yeah. I, I don't really intend to play it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. That's close enough. Well, yeah. he's not really your play style, right? You're, you're not really... You're more of a, a hybrid player. You like to score goals. and. Uh, I don't think I'm really a, a butcher's play style player. <laughs> But I, I I like well, the model so much that uh, I wouldn't go anywhere else. See, I think that's that's kind of a, a misnomer. I mean, like any game, you play the faction how you want to play it. Yes, uh, for sure. But I think I could play them more effectively. If you were playing a more aggressive like style, like stereotypical butchers? Yeah. Maybe. But then you wouldn't have as much fun, so what's the point? Yep. That's why I don't... I mean, I mean, keeping in mind that we're not playing in tournaments, we're not, you know... Oh, no, no, no. We're not trying to win. Well, well no, no, we're trying well, to We are trying to win, but we're not not hell-bent on winning, right? Yep. That's right, okay. yeah. Because not, saying you're not trying to win is, is not accurate at all. No. Because judging by the way you lambaste me when we play, you're trying to win. Yes. <laughs> But I tried to win 
by having by both of us having fun. Like I know one of the things that butchers are supposed to be known for is to eye the ball and kill it. And that's something I don't understand in Gill Ball. Like it doesn't make sense for me but in a football you, game. You don't want to play a soccer game where you try not to touch the ball? Exactly. Like I try to have the ball as much as possible and use it as a butcher. It's one of my only source of dodges. <laughs> so. Yep. This is very true. All right, it's baby poop time. I'll be right back. Fill the air. Yeah, so I am working on Veteran Ox. I'm doing skin right now. And that's my start. I just realized that I have some really, really old pots. Or just, as we've talked before recording, there is some environmental problem here, and all my Petri pots are cracking. So I'm mixing my skin tones right now because... It's just not working. Oh, you're you, you got no P3 paints anymore. I know you were, we were talking about earlier and how they were. Yeah, uh, I have all some, but like the, my the base coat I use for my skin tones usually, my Caucasian skin tone is is dead. It's what dead, uh, Jim. what color is that? Oh, I threw it in the garbage bin. I like how you don't even know what the name is. I never check the names. I know. Uh, it's cardiac flesh. Okay. Oh, baby poop, you're a lot greener than I remembered. <laughs> yeah, so I'm doing skin right now. I, and I did the, I mixed too much, so I started doing the skin on brisket also, not just ox. Why not, eh? Yeah, uh, the biscuit will be done. That's it. Might as well, it's there. So. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, this is no good. Now I'm facing away from my lake, so that's no good either. There we go, I'm back. Okay. <laughs> oh no, it's the... The baby poop is very, very, very green. And it's uh, kind of destroying... Everything under. Yep. So, I'm using a makeup sponge. Purchasing a purchasable at the dollar store. To gently rub the miniature and remove the excess baby poop. Well, that looks pretty good. If you save it, that's worth it. Yeah, absolutely. This was something um, Jim Wapple actually taught me. The the makeup sponges. He uses them all the time for stuff. What else have you been working on this week? Have you hobbied a bit in the week or not? Well... Yeah, I, I finished some more Pulp City stuff. I finished the stuff we were talking about uh, that I was working on last week. So I, I don't know. I think Sister Bedlam was still almost done. Hellsmith is pretty much done. Uh, I started doing their bases, which weren't uh, which weren't finished yet. Along with uh, Nuke, Nuke is finished as well. Oh, okay. So it's it's been a fairly productive week. I, I had a lot of stuff going on this weekend. So and last week, so I, I didn't get as much done as I'd hoped. But uh, on the whole, I'm I'm satisfied with my progress, and I got no real reason to to try to rush anything. No, for sure, it's fine. Oh, this is uh, yeah, this is working out now. Yeah. I mean, even the Pulp City, this we're not playing a ton of it right at the moment, but I'm, I'm trying to get stuff done. Just so if people want to play, I can offer them, you know, a selection of painted miniatures to to try. Kind of like why I painted so much judgment right off the bat. Yeah. Just games are more fun than painted miniatures. Let's be honest. Anyone who says otherwise is just fooling themselves. Or is a fool. <laughs> <laughs> and there goes our only listener. Uh, <laughs> I don't think that <laughs> not being pro hobby is really a target <laughs> for us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Since we're, our show is mostly we're not known hobby. for our uh, super competitive mindset, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, fair enough. Well, we got Steve. Actually, he hasn't been on it. We uh, should probably do something about that before people think we got rid of him or something, or killed him off screen. <laughs> Where's Steve? Who? 
Steve, the other French Canadian guy. You mean Yom? No, Steve. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I kind of like this tone. It's working out okay. He's not uniform, but that's okay, because, you know, things in nature aren't uniform. He's a tree, right? No, no tree is 100% perfectly consistent coloration on every part of it. Uh, oh, no, for sure. <laughs> that would not seem natural. On my side, I this week I finished... Uh, Carol the Rabbit that I, I started painting last show, I think. Yeah, good job, by the way. I, I really liked uh, the entry. Yeah, I, I finished Carol and I finished the entry, the, the farm. So, all done, all painted. And looking fantastic, if I yeah. say so myself. I'm happy with it. Uh, I'm a bit less happy about the result, but that's fine. It's a competition, we cannot win them all, so. Yep. So you were eliminated. So it's kind of like iron painting, yeah. right? So. Yep. But like you said, you get to a certain point where everyone's level is so high, and losing a competition like that isn't necessarily indicative of anything. It, it just could be that the topic uh, didn't speak to you as much as other topics did, like the subject, I should say. Mm-hmm. Or you know, it's judging. Anything judging is subjective. Yep. And I can't. I cannot say that I'm sad because I was was misjudged or anything. No, my opponent's piece was really nice too. And, well, I'm not officially out because the results are not fully in. One of the judges has not replied yet. There's a bit of lateness in the judging. But, but already you know. all four other judges have voted for my opponent, so... It's only in, uh, right. Not in theory, but, uh, we don't have the paper seeing it, but it's clear that <laughs> I'm not continuing forward, so. That's too close. Even if I get a vote from the last one, it won't change anything, so. But yeah, and one of the things I like about this competition is that judges don't just give a, a pass or a fail, they do have comments. And, <laughs> There was no bad comments about my entry. So it's just that in the end, it didn't have the pop that the other had. But yeah. there was no, nothing bad about the build, the painting. Well, the, to be honest, Antoine, I don't see what they could have really said. The team. Bad. So you were on theme. The, the build quality was excellent. Um, your, your painting is always top notch. So, that's good. And anyway, like we talked about during the the last show, I probably wouldn't have been, had time to do an entry for the semifinals. So, it's better like that. It's something about moving or something. Yeah. yeah. However, there is a, what something they call the redemption round. So, all people who have been knocked out. By voting, so they they completed their piece. Not people who who dropped or uh, didn't or publish didn't. on time, stuff like that. There will be uh, at the same time as the finals, we will all get uh, all the redemptionists, if I can call them that way, will get a, a, a team and work on a last project for like a, a losers bracket final. And that will happen after my move. So I'll be able to do uh, one last piece in the contest for that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So that should be fun. Instead of just doing uh, one-on-one for the contest, it will be all 15, 20, 25. I don't remember how we, how many we are that did complete all the steps. But it will be a big challenge. It's not just one person we need to uh, to best. <laughs> and there are some really creative ideas. Well, just the the people I've seen you square off against so far, like like the the guy that did the Iron Maiden Power Slave themed uh, yeah board, right? Like sweet Jeebus. 
<laughs> yeah, this one, one, pep, one person add, uh, like Cloud Kingdom team. Well, one pair add that team. And one other girl did kind of a Miyazaki homage piece based on the Castle in the Sky and House Moving Castle and little figurines and pieces from a bunch of the movies all with all, all like a bunch of floating islands in the clouds where you see a Totoro and you see one of the uh, small tree spirits, forest spirits from uh, Princess Monoki and that was really cool. I must be like the only anime guy in the world that doesn't like Miyazaki. <laughs> well, you're probably not the only. But I'm sure there aren't too many of us. Like my friend once told me, they're just too cerebral for me. I like my anime light and fluffy. <laughs> yeah, we, we've talked about that in the past. I don't know if we've talked uh, during the recording, but sometimes I uh, I bring stuff to you and you say, that's just too weird, Antoine. Well, it's, it's not even a matter of weird. There's weird stuff I've watched. I mean, yeah, yeah, but like you say, you told me that. Oh, I know that was something you would have listened to. Just <laughs> yeah, well, you have a tendency to like weird, bizarre things, and that's okay. My wife is sneaking up behind me. Mm-hmm. Oh, she sneaked away. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I keep my headphones just low enough so I can hear when she opens the door, so I know to look to see if she has a knife. <laughs> she is not going to catch me unawares. Well, not while I'm recording, anyway. No. I figure I'm going to go out like John Travolta in Pulp, in Pulp uh, Fiction. <laughs> I'm sitting sitting on the toilet reading a magazine. Like, what? <laughs> blam, blam, blam. Yeah. Back to the poop. Well. I guess. <laughs> I wasn't... Yeah. No, I know you weren't. Going I, was, there. <laughs> I wasn't really focused on the pooping so much as the dying, but okay, we can, we can play it your way. Yeah, but that that's all I did this week, and uh, after that, I've been uh, doing boxes and catch up on uh, cleaning the house and chores, because <laughs> with the the rush to do the piece in uh, just uh, ten days, I. I had some catch up to do. Darn you, real life. Yeah. And all your real lifeness. I, uh, man, there's a lot of little green vines going on this guy. I'm regretting certain life choices now. <laughs> yeah. Also, I've got like one arm done, and the green I chose was, uh, maybe a little too green. It's got a bit of blue in it. It's a bit too bright. I'll maybe try to go over with something that's a more yellow or something. I don't know. This just was not what I intended. I've been doing obby planning, though. Like, obby room planning. Yes. It's obby gonna... related. <laughs> I'll, I'll have a bit less space, so uh, I'm trying to... Uh, See how I can arrange my stuff and how I can maximize uh, storage and display and the painting area. Like my painting desk has never been a problem in the last two places we I've was or even last three places. Cause I always add a big part of the basement just to work on, and most of the time, like yeah. Uh, Unfinished room, so I didn't have to bother with, uh, I say cleaning, but like, uh, picking up. Yeah, organization more or less, yeah. yeah. But the, in the next place, my obi room will be in the same room as the, the, the playroom for the kids. So it needs to be. Don't leave the crazy glue out. Yeah, that's the kind of thing I'll have to have, uh, drawers for. Like the obby knives, obby supply, stuff like that, so that it's not easy to access. And that I need to store it away every time. I also have a, a desk to myself, but I need to organize better that desk and uh, everything else around it. Yeah, I hear you. 
and it's like when you buy a house, you see the house, you visit a bit, but like we don't have the exact floor plan, and so I'm eager to get the keys. We'll have the keys a couple of weeks before moving in, so I'll be able to do some more planning. Yeah, some more planning. Know exactly how much space I really have, <laughs> and start to. Well, I think even the podcast recording was going to be an issue, wasn't it? Because we're worried about the noise and, and yeah, disturbing it, the kids. Yeah, well, we d- we didn't know yet when last time we talked about it. And I might not have uh, a hobby room. I might have had to be in the living room for that. But right now, the there is an extra room. So, Oh. Well, not an extra room, but there is a game room for the kids. So the, the basement will have... A, a big open area, like a family room. Mm-hmm. And my podcasting and hobbying will be done in that room. There will be a bedroom next to me for my oldest, but he sleeps like rock. Nothing wakes him up, so that won't be a problem. Well, that's good. Yeah. It's good because the podcasting will have been difficult and uh, RPGing because we do RPG. Uh, Virtually, so. Yeah, but that, you know, you're on a laptop. You could really do anywhere. You could do it up in the dining room or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But then I'm buttering my wife in her shows <laughs> and stuff like that. She has headphones on. I've been there. Mm-hmm. Then she can just resort to hand signals when she wants a cupcake and a mug or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> As opposed to stomping on the floor and texting you. Mm. In that weird version of Morse code you seem to use. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Three stump, that's a, a mud cake. Two stumps, that's a drink. Isn't there also the popcorn request occasionally? Mm-hmm. Once in a while. <laughs> kind of funny. I uh, I approve. I don't blame her. Those, uh, those mud cake or mug cakes, whatever they're called, are uh, delicious. I don't blame her for wanting you to make them. <laughs> we have a friend that Ask for one every time she comes here, but she doesn't want the recipe because she doesn't want to uh, start doing them all the time at her place. <laughs> so Is she, that Sarah, yeah, she makes sure to not watch too much when I'm doing it, <laughs> so that she can't learn how to do it. Well, I mean, she has <laughs> the internet, presumably. Yeah, but uh, she <laughs> refused to look for the place I found it because. A bunch of mud cakes are not that good, but that one. Oh, I, I know that what's one good. is good. <laughs> I know. I have sampled. Yeah. Take it from the fat guy. It's good. <laughs> so yeah. um, I'm not sure when this turned into a cooking show, but uh... <laughs> it just did. <laughs> <laughs> apparently, apparently, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually open up the dock for this show just in case there's anything useful in there. Well, this I think happen. we're about done with our like weekly hobby, uh, except if you want yeah. to talk about stuff you bought, maybe. <laughs> no, I haven't even bought anything lately, Antoine. No, I am but a pale uh, image of my former self. <laughs> Uh, I can go. I did. Uh, I went. Su- I did multiple small, small purchases. I pledged in the uh, Burrows and Badger Kickstarter we talked about last week. I got three small minis. And what did I get else? I think that's all. I- I'm planning on uh. getting the uh, Relic Blade book, but I have not. Uh, didn't you pledge for it yet. Park World or something? Or? Yeah, but that was a couple of weeks ago, I think. Was it? Oh, okay. Yeah. That all runs together in my head. Yeah. But yeah, I, I pledged am. like the the basic pledge for Ark World, just a book and one of the one of the starters, and that's it. And uh, for birds and badgers, it's just miniatures, and there is a pick and uh, pick and choose, pick and mix, mix and pick. I don't, I don't know. Pick and choose, I think, makes sense. Yeah, pick and choose is the, is the English expression. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I just used that pledge, 
and just pick three small models that fit with my uh, free beast warband to give me some more uh, variety from the other stuff I I had already. Yeah, I um I didn't buy anything, but I I was shopping on the Pop City website and I added a bunch of stuff to a cart. <laughs> and so far, I've resisted purchasing it. Um, yeah. Just just odds and ends for stuff. I mean, not a ton of money, really. Uh, less than less than a hundred dollars US. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, my main bug with Pop City with the store right now is we have a lot of stuff already, and sadly, most of the miniatures I want are out of stock. And there is a lot of stuff I don't have that's there. But it's not stuff that I'm looking that much forward to. But there's at least, uh, like, I have five models in mind that were at the top of my list to buy, and all five are out. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, I wanted a so uh, hundred voices, the, uh, yep, the, the villain the, leader. Yep. Uh, Chimchi, the only arc model I don't have, is out too. Uh, I wanted to say, you mean out of stock, right? Yeah, out of stock. Uh, wild, not wild men. The um, <sighs> you're, he's back in stock. Uh, not when the Canadian lumberjack one, right? Yeah, that one. Yeah, he's in stock. Oh, he's in stock now because he's in my cart right now. Yes. Oh, I should check them because they might have added more. Because I wanted those guys, Red Baron and uh, Seabolt. Red and Baron is also five... in stock. Oh, so they did restock some. Oh, that's dangerous. I shouldn't have known that. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Well, if you're interested in uh, having more money added to your uh, cart, we can uh, arrange something. Yeah. And I could add some money to my Brewers and Badger pledge once it's uh, I get the survey. I've got... Um, see, who do I got in my cart? Uh, there's two... Settler's green characters, one uh, with a bow. Bramble. Bramble. So is Bramble's there? There's a girl who, I don't think, maybe she's not Settler's green. She's like a, she's floating. She's one of the newer sculpts. She's got a crown. Oh, shoot. I think she, she might be support. Kind of a ice uh, girl with a oh, crown. Yeah. Guinevere or something like that. Yeah, yeah, her. Isn't she one of the ally for... Oh, no, the uh, Supreme Alliance? Uh, maybe. But I, I just like the sculpt. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, she's my cart. And then there's uh, Kor, because I don't... He's the only heavy metal model I think I don't have. Uh, actually, no, there's two I don't have. Him and Lady Cybern. I don't have either of those. And Do you have the uh, Tomcat, the the plane man? Oh, no, I don't have Tomcat. That's true. He's also in stock, and I've looked at him, but I, I can't get into him, so yeah. I haven't. Uh... Did you order Mudbutt? The small oh, wow. support, the small no. repair guy? You're right. There's a bunch of stuff I don't have. I keep thinking there's less than that. Yeah. No, I've never seen him available. Yeah, I'd forgotten. I, I forgot. I didn't think I was missing that much, but I guess I am. Um... And then there was Chromag because I don't have a, a evil powerhouse. Yeah, and he's pretty good for just a generic bad guy. Mm-hmm. For my generic bad guy squad, and the uh, doc, you know Doctor Warlock uh, to do that mystery list I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Just just to mods and ends. Okay, I'll, I'll have to check them because you named a bunch of them that I knew were out before. Well, I'll just stuck. Like, and I don't remember Bramble and uh, Gwen being available. No, us. and Chromag either. So, hmm. Well, Chromag was available before the site went down. Uh, maybe. But when, I, the, I, when it came up, it was pretty out before I could check, because I don't remember it being there. Well, possible. Or it was just not in my priorities, like the other five, so who knows? I'll, I'll check after. <laughs> Okay, well, <laughs> there you go. Thanks, I didn't know so. Yeah, well, like I said, I was there the other day 
trying desperately to resist spending money. So far, <laughs> so good. I will help you make sure you have a reason to order it. <laughs> I suppose I can always just get someone. You, know, you can them. drop some of them. <laughs> well, no, what usually happens with stuff like that is I just buy, I buy some stuff and then I hand it to my wife and say, give this to me for Christmas. Mm, yeah. And, and then she pays me back whatever I invested. Invested. Whatever I spent. <laughs> Make it sound like it's an investment. Yeah, right. I always love people who who have a hobby and make it sound like it's an investment. Try to convince themselves they're not throwing money out the window. It's like, you are lying to yourself, your wife, your kids. You're like... <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So, uh, back on topic-ish. Yeah. So, a couple weeks back, we had uh, an idea for something. And we were talking about doing kind of like a... Like a, like hobby reviews or game reviews and and like playthroughs and well, it's something a little more in depth, a little more focused than the general hobby shenanigans we do now. Yeah, kind of a, a showcase of a game. Yeah, so we'd we'd pick a game, we'd get some models for it, we'd paint them up, talk about the models, and then we'd uh, you know read rules, talk about <laughs> rules. That would be mostly Antoine doing the talking. Uh, <laughs> Antoine's the rules master. Yeah. And talk about the background, too. Yeah, it's always interesting to see where people come from, and, and, and yeah. it's not really often discussed, right? Nope. Because um, a lot of these games have really cool backgrounds. And, you know, a lot of people don't care about stuff like that, especially in the more competitive games, which is unfortunate, because I think it, you lose you lose a lot when you just ignore ignore fluff entirely. I get it's not for everyone, but I find it's just a, a bit of a waste. What do you think? I agree. Uh, I I like to read at least the basic fluff for every game, like the, the basic rule book. I probably won't keep up with all expansions. Like It, it happened with Guild Ball. I think I stopped after the third book to keep up because there was a it was releasing faster than I could concentrate on it it happened with War Machine 2 when I was still playing I kept kept up a while but after some time there was also it, uh, the fluff was split between every book release yeah because it, yeah, you get one book release where it was like Horde's fluff and the one that was War Machine's fluff yeah, and I was not playing any War Machine faction. So I, yeah, was, I, I getting was the same way, but the opposite. Part. I wasn't playing any Horde stuff. Yeah. So. I was only getting part of a fluff. And I think the less important part, sadly, for, for Hordes, I think the bigger move were on the War Machine side. Yeah, the more interesting fluff was definitely on the War Machine side. Um, so. and also, I would argue the better written fluff as well. I mean, the same authors, but uh, I just get the impression that the, the War Machine stuff was was better done in a lot of ways. But I, I like to know at least the the reason why stuff is there and how it's happening. I mean, why, why are these people at war and what's going on? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I really like that. And I like, uh, like fluff interviews. One of the things I like the most from the War Machine podcast were the uh, interviews with uh, Doug Seacat. Doug Seacat? Yeah, uh, you know, I really used to like the War Machine novels too. I was really upset when they when they uh, sacked that whole idea. I, I just started buying into them and I had bought pretty much everything that was available. And uh, I'd gotten into a trilogy, and I was all excited, and it was, you know, really interesting. And then they canceled the division, and then they're like, yeah, we're going to continue the trilogy, but it's going to be like like a worldwide campaign thing, and people are going to write in and tell us what they want, and that's what we're going to do, and we're, we're going to write it based on that. And, you know, knowing from GW days, that never, ever works. <laughs> it's never as coherent than the original yeah. ideas were. Exactly. It's almost like the player base are not professional writers or something. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, so that's one of the elements uh, I would like to go through when we talk about those games. And that's a lot of material to cover, so I don't think we it's it would be a, a single show topic. No, no, it'd be like maybe a month of shows or something. Like we'd... Yeah. Maybe pick yeah, we pick one game, a show. concentrate it for uh, two, three, four episodes maybe, and after that have uh, some other things to talk about. And let us pick pick another game, get time to uh, assemble stuff and uh, go back. So maybe like one of one showcase like that every couple of months. Yeah, and Lord knows we we have a backlog of games we can do, right? Mm-hmm. And mo- some of them are even still played and supported. Some of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's there's some stuff coming out, like, you know, Marvel Crisis Protocol you want to try. Yeah, but you don't. <laughs> well, I'll try anything, Antoine. <laughs> so, I, I've got problems with Marvel Crisis Protocol. Uh, and it's the same problems I had with X-Wing and stuff. I, it's nothing to do with game mechanics. It's the constant need to to buy in to get the cards so that you can, you know, play and, and not feel like you're you're hurting yourself. Yeah, but that makes sense in a competitive environment. But as we mainly play just in our own little group. Yeah, I, I don't know if it will be that much important. Well, like I said, it bothered me for um, X-Wing. Mm-hmm. So I don't see why it wouldn't bother me for this, to be honest. Yeah. Um, but also, aren't the cards only like the tactic decks and missions? There are no upgrades, right? No, I think there's upgrades as well. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm mistaken. I haven't looked that much into it. Mm-hmm. To be honest, I've been so focused on uh, Pulp City. Like, there's also only so many superhero games I need, right? Oh, that's for sure. And the uh, the team construction bothers me for MCP. The fact that it's so open. Yeah. Uh, it bothers uh, the comic book collector side of me. I I hate it. Like, I'm one of those people where I'll, I'll see something, and I I often have a hard time, like, looking at things and not being colored by the comic book. You know, and being like, oh, that's not how that went in the comic book, and that costume is totally wrong, it's from the wrong era, or, you know, like, like little things, little details bother me. Yeah. So, to, to have a team where Spider-Man and the Red Skull are working together, um, because reasons, just, just kills me. Like, <laughs> And it's stupid, and I understand it's it's nitpicky, and it's just a game. But it's also just how I feel, and yeah, that's, that's okay. Mm-hmm. But there's nothing preventing you from sticking to more thematic teams. But I wouldn't want to play a game with someone who was going to do it the other way. Yeah, I understand. Uh, and again, uh, you know, they're allowed to have fun however they want to have fun. I'm not saying they're wrong to want to do that. It's just it, it would bother me and detract from my enjoyment of the game. Yeah. Yeah, I see it the same way that you haven't really picked first grave because you cannot find a way to make sure that everything thematically makes sense together from your and yeah. your opponents uh, teams. And that's the thing. And, and frost grave, like miniature games in general, I'm very much about the the visuals. So, like, there's just not coherent um, visuals. Would would irritate me, and just detract from my enjoyment of the game. Mm-hmm. Which is a shame because I think Frostgrave uh, the rule set uh, is is awesome. I love the you know the whole campaign thing. I I think it's great. I have to find a way to get past it, I suppose. Oh yeah, or or find people that you can decide on a common team when creating your. Uh... Your different warbins. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's... In the, in the case of Frostgrave, it's pretty simple. It's just got to be, you know, something kind of standard fantasy-ish. It would just bother me if 
you um, add Masling and the other add like Lord of the Ring orcs. Yeah, I was gonna use chibis and but the same idea. Yeah. Yeah. All chibi, no problem. All kind of typical fantasy stuff, no problem. Mixing and matching, uh my head explodes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And I can't understand that. Again, not saying it's wrong to do it that way. Like there is no wrong way to have fun. So long as your fun doesn't bother anyone else's fun. Yeah, and and I watched Back in the day, we had like a, a Frostgrave uh, thing going on at uh, Gamers Vault. Yep. And, you know, it was a weekly thing, and I watched several games of it. Uh, and it was super cool. But I just, just couldn't do it for me. Oh, well, my loss. The other thing is, uh, MCP being kind of a movement template game bothers me as a miniature game. It doesn't bother me for a spaceship combat game like X Wing. Yeah, but. That's something that doesn't bug me because the templates are all up to. So it works just like the ruler we use for War Machine or Guild Oh, that, that I did not realize. I didn't, uh, I hadn't looked into it. Yeah. The, that, that's as long as you touch the template when you move, if I, if I understand correctly, you can stop anywhere along the way. It's not like the, uh, the Mercs card. Where you add to go up to the one of the circle, or like X Wing, where oh, you God. add to go to one of to move your whole templates. It's not like that. So the movement is open. It's just that each of the movement templates are a maximum range of movement. Poor Mercs. Well, the new the new cards, the the two point oh version, have add the up to movement. So you were no longer stuck at doing those full card movement. Which would make it a lot more interesting to play. Well, to be honest, that never bothered me so much about Mercs. Um, no? No, oddly enough, I had other problems with that game. Oh, there were other problems, for sure. <laughs> uh, I played a lot of Mercs. I demoed it. I was part of their, their whatever they were called. Black Ops program. Something oh, yeah, like Black Ops, yeah, yeah. Even though they couldn't get my registration working, ever. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I quite liked it. I, I liked it because it was the... That was probably right in my mic, too. Um, it was one of the first... Uh, beer and Pretzels games I ever played. And, like, really played. And, you know, really tried to enjoy. Mm-hmm. And it was a, um, it was a super fun game to demo because, you know, ten minutes I could have anyone playing Mercs. Oh, for sure. Father Oak, you were looking good, if I do say so myself. That's one game I had forgotten on the the list, so it's been added now. What Mercs uh, Second Edition? Yeah, because we have the the book, so. Yeah, we could print some of the card. We have the minis. We have a copy of the book, so we could try the new edition. And the oh, new okay. edition sounds <laughs> a lot more interesting than the first one. And I like the first one too. So there was there was some weird stuff in that first one. Oh, sure. Close close combat or the lack thereof. <laughs> so my guy's a close combat model. Yeah, but I can't move and attack in melee. No. So how the heck do I get anyone in melee? Question. Well, now it works. Yeah, there was only one guy that can move an attack, right? Yep, the Kemvar assassin. The, Kem the Kemvar assassin. He was so good. Uh classic. Classic. <laughs> wow, man, this guy. I am really happy with how this model's coming out. I am doing an excellent job. You hate me. Yeah, so... <laughs> and once like, yeah, hey, whatever, Paul. <laughs> well, it's fun. I am happy that you are happy with it because it didn't look that way earlier during the recording. You are, uh, uh Montagrus. Uh, I got nothing, sorry. I do not know that expression. Oh, well, you're, you are up and down with, uh, that model. Like, oh, oh no, oh. that's too green. Oh, oh, okay. Now it looks good. Oh no, that that's too blue yellow, blue green on the 
The vines. Oh, now they do it good. Oh. <laughs> I'm all over the place. It's an experience uh, listening to you painting it. Entertainment value, buddy. Okay. Which is something that was mentioned in the comment of the couple of shows ago. When what? we first started talking about this topic, like a show showcasing games, we mentioned some of... Like, I just turned around and mentioned some of the games that were on my shelf right next to me, and Moonstone was mentioned. And one of our listeners said, I, I just hope that Paul gets fairies and assemble them during a recording just for the comedic purpose of him <laughs> screwing up the assembly of those super fiddly models. So people know me so well. That was one of the comments we got. Was that Jordan on. or something? No, no, it was another listener. <laughs> uh, I'm glad people find me at least moderately entertaining. I I totally'd like to get a a live stream going. Uh, not not just to me because I think that wouldn't be that entertaining, but I'd love to do a, a you and me combo streaming. Uh, with our conversation, I think people would find it possibly entertaining and educational in the case of your stuff. Uh, your stuff is good too, and you have a speed to how you paint that I cannot attain for well, something that is of a pretty good quality overall. Like for, for gaming pieces, you are up there. Yeah, my, my stuff looks good. I'm not, yeah. I'm not going to win any competitions, but my gaming stuff looks uh, looks pretty good. Yeah, it depends on how inspired I am by the miniature too. Like 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 anything artistic, right? If you don't like what you're doing, it's going to show in the final product. Yep. Um, so you, so you got to enjoy it. I think that's another thing that changed with me. Um, I'm not really painting armies anymore, uh, so. I found my painting has improved. I really think the uh, trying to paint, you know, 300 Space Marines at the time. Uh, uh, or 50 Ultramarine Terminators in a couple of months. <laughs> yeah, like, it, it, I think it it hurt my enjoyment without me even realizing it. Mm -hmm. And so for a while, everything I did was just about speed, right? Was, yeah. I mean, it was it was clean. Don't get me wrong. There, there was nothing sloppy about what I did. Um at least I don't think so, but but it was really speed focused, um, which detracted from the overall experience. I would say. Yeah, like didn't you try to paint like a hundred point of War Machine Minute in like a month or two or something like that? I did. I did paint a hundred points. Yeah, that's a different kind well, of enjoyment. <laughs> I mean, let's you know, going back a couple of years. Remember that Warhammer Fantasy tournament where I painted uh, uh, the your elves? Yeah, was it was it twenty five hundred points? Was the highest level something that like that? Yeah, I painted twenty five hundred points of Warhammer Fantasy in a month. You know, while working a full time job and having a, I'm pretty sure Muriel was was born at that point. I think so. Yeah, so <laughs> that was. Uh, my my baby was small. My dad had just died or was in the process of dying. And uh, I was painting Warhammer Fantasy Army to go to a tournament to play a game I'd never played before. Uh, because of Antoine. I'd had the models for years. I'd just never gotten a game in. And I, I just found it funny that years later, you <laughs> pictures my army in the advertising for the event. <laughs> But I was one of the only guys that had a full painted army there. So it was, it was kind of cool. Oh yeah, back on topic. Um, yes, we have a lot of games we'd like to, like to, to try and, and, you know, discuss. And to be quite honest, it would help us, help motivate us to get stuff painted and finished. Yeah, talking about the focus uh, earlier, that's, that's one way of doing it. Like anytime I have a deadline, it helps me really concentrate. <laughs> Because outside of that, like, I'll be painting all year and painting a model from a game a month and switch game every month. But when we get close to events, 
Like oh, yeah, last time I went to Captain Con, I, I painted like crazy and f fixated on two games and got everything ready. That, yeah, that, that was, wouldn't happen outside of. Uh, that was Relic Knights in the uh, city. city. Yep. And I mean, I I just finished my Relic Knights stuff, right? Or, yep. uh, finished a list, not all of it, but I finished a list. And uh, you know, I want to play that game, so. Because you have such glowing reviews of it, uh, it can't be bad. Oh, it's fun. It's really fun. Yeah. I think this dude is finished. Good. So, did, is there anything else we want to talk about what we might want to do? No, not the game themselves, but... Like, we've been talking about maybe, like, miniature reviews. Would that be... Just audio? Are we trying to tackle video again like we did for Gilball? That might be too much of a... It's going to depend on... T it's time commitment, right? Yeah. And, and I've got no problem um, doing the... Well, to be honest, I'm going to have a lot more time coming up soon anyway. Um, and I've got no problem uh, doing video work because we've got the hardware already. So there's no yeah. real investment in terms of Uh, materials, it's just our time. Yeah. Um, but finding time is, is a challenge for dads with young families, and, and that, is, that is what we are. Yep. That's for sure. I feel, I feel my mic work has been terrible tonight. I'm holding up everything in front of the mic, going <laughs> off mic, doing stuff. Uh, yeah. I'm horrible. I, um, I would say that video is probably something we are looking into, but we won't be doing every time, or we don't know yet. It might, we might do something simple, right? Like, we, we could do uh, just with the webcams, showing stuff, and you know, it could be something as simple as we take some still pictures of the models, and while discussing, we we put those still pictures up on screen, and we discuss, you know, the model that we see, and what we like about what we don't like about it, and, you know, put mm -hmm. stuff out. Do you have a turntable? Um, I do not, but no. that's easy enough to come by. Yeah, that's something we could get. So we could do like 360 of the models we are talking about and switch them around or have shots of uh, models on terrain when like stills from our games. I mean, that's, that's easy enough to build in terms of electronics. There's nothing there. Yeah. So yeah, that, that, that would be fun. Uh, do we talk about games then? Because <sighs> there is a list. And what a list it is. <laughs> um, we can talk about games. Uh, one thing <laughs> we talked about, and because you made fun of it, because, uh, <laughs> with how I labeled the second title, the not owned yet. <laughs> I wouldn't look into that part right now. <laughs> I think we have enough in the first part in the owned games list that we have pretty years of time in front of us just with that part. There. <clears throat> no comment. <laughs> yeah, it's not a small list, Antoine. Let's put that way. Well, I also put everything we have there. It doesn't mean that everything there will be interesting to talk about or that we want to talk about. So, we'll see. Well, that is very true, right? I mean, like, Rangers of Shadowdeep, uh, well, actually, I think, oh my god, the game zone, it's, it's so big. And there are, there are stuff I'd really like to try. Um, yeah, I think that's like, what we'll do. We'll, we'll go through a first, we'll do a first pass there, select stuff we want to play from that list, and after that, Maybe just pick from that shorter, like, uh, top list. Because yeah. we could go through that uh, own list and say what we are really looking forward to or not. You were going to mention one just before I cut you, so. Oh, I was going to say, um, what could I say? I just forgot what it's called. I'm looking at the list. I'm trying to, I know it's in there. It's got to be in there. I don't see it. Uh, it was a Kickstarter. You just backed it, I think. Arc World? No. 
Brewers and Badger? Oh no, I'm sorry, it wasn't a Kickstarter. We looked at it last uh, last show. Uh, it's a game that they've got a. I think they've got a new edition of it, or like a 1.5 edition. Uh, it's got the rules for like jumping and stuff in the game. It's, it's Relic really, Blade. Relic Blade, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That that's one I really want to uh, to try. That's in, in the second list though, because I I have the first edition PDF for just the like the original one, but that's it. I don't have minis for it. I don't have the new book. So if we want to try that one, we will have to get some uh, money out. <laughs> I wouldn't uh, I mind. It's pretty cheap, and you don't need a lot of stuff to play it. So get a book, and like this, the starter faction, the faction starters are, I think, thirty-five US, something like that. And I think you need that plus an extra mini. They seem they seem really affordable. Yeah. And they seem there's some interesting minis there, so I've got no problem oh, with it. Oh, that's for sure. Um, you know, sub sub a hundred dollars is not a huge investment. No, that's true. So, like, I don't mind spending a bit of money to to review. And... Yeah. So, Relic Blade is the first one in the list there. You know, who knows? We 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 get good enough at this. Maybe we'll start getting a bit of support too. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but uh, no, no, I, I don't mean I don't mean like patrons or something like that. But I mean, if we're gonna do quality product, right? Yeah, quality reviews, we might get that. You know, and I'm not necessarily talking about free product, but you know, maybe maybe we get a small price break or something. You know, mm-hmm. there's, there's ways to incentivize without having to give away product. Yeah. And sure. in fact, I I always hate people that like go begging for product. It drives me nuts. Um, I I got no problem buying product. Uh, unless someone asks me to review, because I, I I've done reviews before for like my real job, and uh, yeah, I've had people approach me to review their hardware. I'm like, okay, and then try to get me to like, you know, well, okay, well this will this will be the cost for the hardware if you want to review it. Like, well, hold on, you approach me to review, why would I be paying for the hardware? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Yeah, you're looking at the list on my side. Uh, the top one I would like to try is Anyero. I've added, I haven't had one of my faction painted yet. I did terrain for it, so, but I have not tried it yet, so. That's when, uh, Anyero World of, or World of Twilight, depending on, I never know which of the name is the, the right one. Yeah, which one's the actual product name and which one's just like a, uh, the subtitle. <laughs> I gotcha. Yeah. But yeah, that, that one I, uh, I really want to try. And it, it has, so, we, we've talked a little bit before, but it's interesting. Not having any human in the fluff makes it so different than anything else we have there. It's very quirky. Yeah. And you've not looked at the rules yet, but the, this kind of a, like, secret, bid in the comeback mechanic that I I've not seen in many of the other ones so that would be different and fun to talk about yeah I like unique mechanics and unfortunately there's not a, not a lot of unique mechanics out there any other one that jumps at you uh, that you would like deep wars, deep wars. Uh, I, yeah. yeah I really like the uh, the model I mean that's that's why I bought models uh, it wasn't just because you convinced me to. <laughs> uh, convinced. Hey, Paul, I'm about to buy some models of this game. Do you want to buy anything? Sure. Like, it's about how it went down. Yep. Because you'd won a contest or something, so you had, like, a coupon. I, I already had some, and I, like you said, I won a contest, and I was going to order something more on top of that contest prize money. So we shared on that. Shared splitting, uh, shared, uh, shared shipping. split ship, shipping cost, yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, so that, that's on my list too. And they have a demo table every year at Adepticon, and I walk by it, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I should really, should really give that a try, since I spent that, you know, 100 bucks on the miniatures or whatever. <laughs> I don't even know if, if I have enough for like a, a full game size or just a, 
a, a smaller. I, I don't remember what you got, so I, I don't. Well, that know. makes two of us. I think I got a starter box and like a couple extra models or something. That's probably enough for a, a, at least a medium game. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, that that one I would like to to try. Like Relic Nice and Pop City uh, would be in that list, but we talk about those two often already, so uh, they're not exactly new for us to mention. Uh, I think the next one in there would be Burroughs and Badger, <laughs> because I, I've been working on it and painting it <laughs> recently. And we didn't have a, a cool thematic terrain set to, to, to play with. That's true. Uh, um, I can't say it's something I'm super excited about. Mm -hmm. But that's never stopped me anyway. Yeah. And you have models to use for that. Well, I have models from... Uh, Brushfire. Mm -hmm. But you you can easily proxy them within the game. Or easily, not all of them. Like I don't see how you could use the 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 max. <laughs> well, no, we decided we'd use them as uh, as but, badgers. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's something you could do. <laughs> yeah. I think the other one I would go, uh, I would mention <clears throat> is Moonstone. I got the minis, I think a year ago, something like that. Got a, a crazy good deal of somebody who backed the Kickstarter, but in the end. Uh, didn't want to keep it. So the the mechanics for it and the gameplay looks so interesting. I, I really like how they do uh, objective deployment. Uh, the the moonstones themselves are like shards of crystals that come out from the ground just before dawn. So you are on the time like the reason there are turns is because once the uh, the sun grows, the, the crystals get destroyed by the sun, so you only have a, a small amount of time to pick them up. <laughs> and they grow out randomly, so you pick a number of D4s, you held them up over the table, and you just drop them, and as they scatter is the places where the shards are on the gaming table. And the number that's showing up is how hard they will be to get out of the ground. That's kind of funky. Yeah. Like we said, unique mechanics, right? Yep. Unique mechanics are awesome. And like from our list, I think that's six or seven we've mentioned up to yet. And just a basic list of stuff we own is around 30 games. Yeah. So there's a bunch more. <laughs> we we may have far too many games, Antoine. Mm-hmm. Just going to throw that out there. <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily want to change it. I, oh, I'm no, me saying. neither. I, I, I like the options. Some of them won't see play anytime soon, for sure. <laughs> or ever, yeah. Maybe ever. <laughs> uh, that's possible. But I, I like to have the option <laughs> there. Oh, goodness. But yeah, I think that, that small list is uh, good enough to start. Yeah, it's not that small. Well, the, the sevens, <laughs> it's not so bad. And plus, don't forget, Dystopian Wars is kind of the new edition. Uh, it's on the list, but... And we have... I don't <laughs> I saw it, but we also have armies for it already. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, we have armies for a lot of stuff there. Some of them, yes, we only have books, or we don't have uh, everything required yet. But most of those we have. <sighs> Do you want to decide on our first pick now? Oh, sure. Live on the air. No problem. Or do we, like those, we have what's required to do it. So do we want to ask uh, listeners and make a poll for the first one? Sure. Okay. I always like putting my fate in someone else's hand. We'll make a poll then. Okay. Uh, as it doesn't interest you that much, I think I will remove Burroughs and Badger from the list. And we'll have six. I think six is enough for our first run. And uh, yep. we'll see how, uh, 
people uh, what people decide and i'm sure i can get you to try burrs and badger anyway outside of those uh, that uh, <laughs> more i've got no problem trying bur- bur- actually i got no problem with burrs and badgers i i maybe seem pensive when you're talking about it because i'm trying to remember where my brush fire models are <laughs> i know that on the other side of the basement from me and a baggie are a bunch of hamster berserkers that i found mm-hmm. and i know where the mech suit thing is but i don't remember what else i owned and I haven't seen them when I cleaned up the last couple of years. Last couple of times I've cleaned up, I haven't seen the models anywhere. No. So I don't know if I even, maybe I don't own more than that. You should, because they came with other stuff in the starter. But I don't think I, did I buy a starter? I think the Berserker were in the starter. Didn't come with, the, with rats in the starter? I don't know if I bought a starter, though. Oh, I may, maybe I may not, have just then. bought blisters. Oh, that's possible. I mean, I know I have the character that Yom painted for me in my painting display. Mm-hmm. Next to my model by Liz Beckley, my other model by Aaron Lovejoy. So he's got good company. My my Antoine uh, Bergeron um, uh, Vitier. All my pro-painted stuff by actual professionals. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So I, you know, I know where some of it is. I just don't know if I have enough, or if I know where enough of it is to actually play a real game. I have enough, though. Wow, that's yeah. So, if we end up uh, having to, if that one is picked up, it's not like we are missing much. Uh, from the official minis, I have enough to do one warbend, and from my own brush fire stuff, I think I'm. Might be missing a mice or two with like uh, ranged weapons, and I think I still have some unassembled ones. So I could just uh, assemble a couple of uh, conscript mice with bows, and that warbin would be big enough too. Did you say conscript mice? Yeah, that's where their name was. was. I love it already. All about the conscript mice. Yeah. So I'll just go fa- uh, quick. The the small list we have now. And we will uh, put our fate in uh, probably just a couple of our listeners' end because that's all we have <laughs> as a, as commenters. Commenters, uh, there, there's four usually. So you four knows who you are, <laughs> and if more than that reply, uh, reply then uh, good. I'll be happy to have more feedback. So the list right now is Relic Knights, Pulp City, A Near All, The World of Twilight, Relic Blade, Deep Wars, Burrows and Badgers, and finally Moonstone. So one of those will be our first uh, showcase, game showcase project. Well, okay. You, you say that like I'm pushing that on you. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> Okay, let's move on. Uh, <laughs> I think we've been recording for a while. Yes, we have. <laughs> so we'll just do a quick uh, news list. And uh, I think that's going to be a show. So Sorry, I was confused because I didn't realize we were going to list the stuff now. I thought we were actually going to discuss uh, what we wanted to have in our first six. Oh, no, okay. Uh, I thought that's that we okay. just picked totally, them Yeah, up. you committed. It's all good. Oh, well, didn't we just mention the ones we were the most interested in? I just I, listed them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, listeners, if the list is not the same, it's because we have talked after re- the recording. That's it. <laughs> no, no, no. It'll be fine. It's all fine. <laughs> Worst case, we'll add some more to it to have more choice. Yeah. I'm easy. <laughs> Okay, on to news. Okay, so first one by Frozen Ninja 3D. It's a line of resin plinths and display stands for miniatures. So uh, the owner is doing some uh, doing 3D sculpting, and it's a line of pretty affordable plinths. So They're actually, not super big, but yeah, and actually, I, I I've met the owner. Um, oh yeah, you you did. 
Yeah, so he actually uh, worked as an accountant before he decided to follow his dream and sculpt minis. Oh, okay. So he's a relatively new company. Um, he has a bunch of really affordable stuff, not just the plinths. If you look at like his uh, 50 millimeter or 54 millimeter models, whatever it is, they're very, very affordable. He's got some cool busts. He's got a lot of neat things. Um, it is worth checking out. Oh, cool. I, I've not heard about him before. I probably saw it pass, but, uh, yeah, we, he, he there is so are, many stuff. He and his wife are lovely people. Oh. Uh, yeah. People you met uh, at uh, Adepticon or Reapercon, maybe? Yeah, Adepticon. And, uh, Yom actually picked up some of their models. Oh. Yeah, he's, uh, he's a super cool gentleman. In fact, I think, uh, it's from, uh, Yom shared it initially. That's, uh, that's uh, where I think I saw the project the first time. Yeah. So well, that those are uh, plants. Uh, they are 3D printed. Uh, it, or is for the uh, the cast version uh, of them. They are the STL files are not available, and they they are all thematics. Uh, there is one that's called Skull and Spine, where there's a skulls at the base with spine spiraling. Up to a top place where the model will go. Uh, names like uh, insect infestation <laughs> or hungry stomach. Stomach. I'm not sure how stomach. you pronounce stomach. Yeah. Stomach. Yeah. So there is a a lot of styles, and most of the plants are twelve bucks. Yeah, he he's he does some amazingly well priced stuff. So. I, I, there was one that cost more, and it's because it's a special um, translucent resin, like a, a, a high. That's the ice one, right? Yeah. yeah. So that one is sixteen, which is still not that costly. And if it sounds expensive too, it's because you've never tried to buy a wood plinth. Yeah, the wooden plinth got so much more. So it, it, it's a good price, and they they have really cool detail on them. So it's worth looking at it. Like there are. How many, like 10, 10 or 12 styles right now? And others are added as the Kickstarter is going. Speaking of going, the Kickstarter is over its funding price almost double right now. And it will, by the time of release, it will have just a bit over two weeks left to go. And it will be closing on November 24th. Next up, it's a small, fun project I stumbled upon today called uh -oh. Sugar Realms Candy Golem STL Files. So it's what they call shukrans. So small golems made of sentient candy <laughs> that the soul of an adventurer or a creature animates. So it's... Files for miniatures for all the base class in D and D fifth edition, and they also have uh, the the PDF for the race itself to to be able to play them as a specific race That's of funny. animated golems. Like they become uh, soft if they're uh, wet or lake from water or slash saliva, <laughs> and you get disadvantage when it happens. <laughs> And stuff like that. Oh goodness! The, the the fluff is funny. I've just read the the quick for uh, one page introduction for the the race, and the models are kind of cute. They look like they they are not chibi proportion, but like cartoony a bit. They all have skull heads, kind of cartoony skull heads. With uh, super gluey eyes to go with them in the 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 art renditions. <clears throat> of them. Okay, they are an interesting look, and there's a bunch of monsters too, uh, with name like Jelly Blobs or Mint Holder or Syrup Skeleton. Mm, syrup Skeleton. <laughs> so. They're super cute. Yeah. There's so many things I, I love. I love the barbarian. I love the, the druid. Pardon me. Um, 
even the like the, the cute cool. giant chibis. The, yeah, the, they're freaking adorable. So it's a s- pretty small Kickstarter. The, the basic goal was five hundred dollars. Uh, it's over sixteen hundred dollars now. There is there will be three weeks left to go. So for something small that doesn't cost much, like. The pledge is simple. 20 US dollars, you get all STL files. There's one pledge level, and that's it. So you get the 12 uh, Sucrons, so the 12 uh, races, and uh, no, 12 classes. You get five that's monsters, one giant monster, the Quatin the Leech. I just Quat- love the name of the Sucrons. <laughs> <laughs> and all the stretch gold, all that for 20 bucks. So. Yeah, how, how do you go wrong at that point, right? Yeah, and delivery is two weeks. Like, once the money is there, the mo- they will start He's got the files, yeah. sending the files right uh, as it goes. I think some of the classes might still be work in progress, but you will start getting stuff, like, as soon as money clears, uh, money clears from Kickstarter. So, it's a cool one. Uh... As mentioned, there will be about three weeks left, so the project ends on November 28th. And the last item I want to talk about is not a Kickstarter. So this is by Spellcrow. It's one of their... Diniac, I think is the name. Those are their um, pumpkin people. So it's a Diniac with a crossbow. I, oh, I just love awesome. that phrase so much. They have a lot of them, and this is their most recent release. Like, uh, they have a game out now, a fantasy game, a fantasy skirmish game, and I am almost tempted to get it just to be able to play those. You know what they make me think of, eh? They make me think of the uh, Relics ragdoll people. I don't know why. Yeah, the Britannians a bit. Yeah. That's true. (laughs) And 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 I think it's just because it's the... The kind of cute, kind of creepy... Animated look <laughs> yeah. to them. I really think that's what it is. Yeah. So this one, it's simple. It's a pumpkin man with a cloak and what looks like... Uh, I, I I have Witch Hunter in mind, but that, that's not exactly it. It makes me think of uh, like, like Harlan uh, Versch. Like uh, yeah. kind of a... From War Machine... Kind of, kind of a witch hunter, or a oh, inquisitor style. Called the, the, like the first Americans, the that the pilgrims. The yeah, doesn't that, that look like a pilgrim at? Kinda, yeah, yeah, I guess maybe. But yeah, it has a kind of a witch hunter look, and with the crossbow, it it looks like a a pumpkin monster hunter. <laughs> so, I really like it. So this with, one with it can be yours for oh I I didn't know but the uh, the ad is optional you can also have just the uh, the pumpkin ad really if you want if you look uh, click on the second picture oh <laughs> I think the hat really completes the model though yeah I think so too but the the pumpkin's actually a jack o' lantern right because the top's cut out yes <laughs> yeah. yeah and this the the model is seven pounds fifty. So, pretty cheap. Yeah. Yeah, for a risen model. It's it's right there in the price. So, Spellcrow, <coughs> Diniac with Crossbow. That was my last news item I wanted to talk about. Well, that's uh, finishing on a high note, I have to say. Yeah. It's pretty, <laughs> pretty awesome. I have, uh, I have successfully wrecked this guy, fixed this guy, wrecked him again, fixed him again. <laughs> That's uh, usually my cue to stop. I say usually because I, I apparently am not stopping. I've done most of the skin on Boar, but uh, once we start talking, started talking about games and news item, I mostly put my uh, painting away. So yeah, because you, you get too excited. Yeah, I know you. <laughs> Antoine's all about the uh, the weird goblin miniatures. And lists. Or in this case, we're just making weird. lists. Like, having the list of games is fun to work on, even if we don't do anything with it. Just making the list. He's like Santa Claus 
making a list <laughs> and checking it twice. Well, yeah. If I only looked at that list twice, it would have been good. <laughs> I checked it a lot more than twice. <laughs> yeah. But I think on that note, we, this show would, will be the longest we've had in a while. I think even the last time we had Yom on, we didn't go this long. Really? We're that long? And that's saying, uh, that's saying a lot. Yeah, well. Yeah. So I think that's enough for tonight. All right, buddy. Yeah, let me just fix this guy's eyes one last time. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's not been a great night for, uh, for Paul painting eyes. That. <laughs> All right. Uh, Antoine, it's, uh, oh wow, we, oh my god, are we way over. Holy That's crap. That's what I said, what I was saying. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you have a great night, great rest, blah, 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 great rest of your week. You too, my friend. I am going to mess up the side one more time and then call it quits. <laughs> Apparently. And I'll, uh, see you next week. Bye, geeks. Thanks for listening to Geeks of the North. If you want to contact us, you can email us at geeksofthenorth at gmail.com. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash geeksofthenorth, or follow us on Twitter at geeksofthenorth. You can follow me, Paul, at PRFilio, Antoine at Eltonio Berg, Steve at B underscore Steve, and if you really feel the need, I guess you can follow Yom. He's at Yomasta. Breaks and outro music by Ladrav. You can listen to them at ladrav.bandcamp.com. See you next time, geeks. Thank you for checking out United Geeks Network family member. If you enjoyed it and are looking for other online media with a geek culture slant, head over to unitedgeeksnetwork.com where you will find Geeky Voyage, a geek and pop culture blog that explores a variety of fandoms and many pop culture favorites from film, television, music, and various other topics with liberal doses of humor, quirky musings, and heavy fangirling thrown in. The United Geeks Network. You can broadcast your geekiness at unitedgeeksnetwork.com.